I almost killed my elder sister because I wanted to have her husband all to myself. But she was dodging my plans. I set her up and she was caught. Her husband told her to leave the house and that moment was my joyful moment. My name is Chika and I was in 200 level in the University of Abuja when my elder sister got married. She got married to a rich man called Femi. Femi was handsome and neat. Whenever I saw his post on social media, I couldn't help but think of how to be in his arms. I also imagined who his side chick could be. And I often said to myself that his chick must be enjoying because I know that men must cheat. Every day I saw myself thinking of my sister's husband. After my final year exam, I told my elder sister that I would love to come over to stay with them as I wait for my NYSC. My sister accepted. So I finally went there. Every night I would go to their door just to listen to how my sister's husband was making love to her. It turned me on and I would end up touching myself with his picture in my head. One night while they were in the sitting room, I entered their bedroom and secretly set up my camera where they wouldn't see it. I wanted to capture my sister's husband's nakedness. Fortunately, I did. My phone recorded everything they did that night. I became so much more desperate to be in his arms. I tried seducing and getting my brother-in-law's attention several times and in several ways. But I never really got the opportunity to fully express myself and intentions. A week came when my sister was on night shift. I was the happiest person on earth. That night, I went to the bathroom. I started shouting and my sister's husband came to rescue me. When he came, I ran out with a very small towel into his arms and I held him tight. I told him I saw a snake. He told me to hold on so he could check. After checking the bathroom, he came back and said he didn't see anything and that I should try and go to sleep. I told him I couldn't sleep alone because of what I saw. Unable to convince me, he told me to come down to the sitting room so I could stay there while he worked. I did and at last I seduced him and he made love to me. I was truly overjoyed. I thought now that he had gotten a taste of me, he would keep coming back for more and our relationship would blossom. But after that day, he started avoiding me. He even stopped staying alone in the house with me whenever my sister was not around. He would even go as far as to call his sister to come over. I was so angry. I found out I was pregnant a month after that night and I told him. I asked him to take responsibility for the baby and I or else. His response was that nothing could make him marry another woman when my sister was still alive. He told me to remove the pregnancy. His response really broke my heart and made me so angry. I then decided to poison my sister so she can die. Yes, I was desperate. All my effort to kill her didn't work. I then decided to set her up with a man whom I hired. Finally, her husband believed it and on that faithful day, he pushed her out of the house. My sister in tears and confusion called on me to follow her out, but I refused. I stayed back inside and she was surprised. Eventually, she left the house. When her husband came back from work, he asked if my sister left with everything and I said yes. His next move was to bring a glass of juice. He told me to drink as we talked about us in the sitting room. I was so happy that he got me a gift which meant that he wanted me to stay. After taking the drink and we had chatted for a short while, he stood up to make a call. Suddenly three guys came into the house. They bundled me outside the gate, brought my belongings outside and immediately my sister's husband drove out. As I was gathering myself and preparing to leave, I noticed I was having cramps. And next thing, I started bleeding. I managed to get to the hospital, bleeding and in pains. When we arrived at the hospital, the doctor asked some questions and ran some tests. Later on, the doctor told me that I had drunk something heavy and damaging and it was flushing out my baby. Immediately, I remembered the juice and I broke down in tears. A week later, the doctor gave me the result. He said my womb was affected because what I took was very strong, which meant I wouldn't be able to give birth to any children in my life. 
I was totally shattered. My sister was not aware of all I did. Should I confess to her? Or should I let it become my lifetime secret? I kept asking myself. Since that I have been acting like a madwoman in the village, days turned into weeks, and the weight of my actions began to crush me. The memory of my sister's tear-streaked face as she left her home haunted me day and night. Yet, I couldn't bring myself to confess. My life had turned into a nightmare of my own making. Rumors spread through the village about my sister's sudden departure. Some villagers whispered that I had something to do with the situation while others speculated that my sister had done something terrible to deserve such a fate. The truth, hidden deep within me, felt like a poison slowly consuming my soul. Somehow, I relocated to a different city and picked up the pieces of my life and moved on. One evening, many years later, as I sat alone in the house, a knock echoed through the quiet. I opened the door to find an elderly woman, her eyes sharp and knowing. She introduced herself as Mrs. Mildred, a respected prophetess from a neighboring town. She said she was sent by the Lord and that she had a word for me. Her presence was both comforting and unsettling. Prophetess Mildred did not mince words. She looked deep into my eyes and spoke, she said, Child, your jealousy and greed not only destroyed a home and marriage, it also left you with irreparable damages. If you do not seek to right your wrongs, God will bring down his wrath upon you and your generation to come. Her words sent shivers down my spine. Prophetess Mildred's visit left me with a heavy heart. I realized that I needed to confront my past and the choices I had made. I decided to find my sister, to seek her forgiveness, and to confess the truth. The journey was not just physical, it was a path towards redemption and healing. I began my search for my sister, asking villagers and traveling to neighboring towns. Each step was filled with dread and hope. I knew that finding her was only the beginning of my penance. Along the way, I encountered people who had known her, each with their own stories and perspectives on the events that had unfolded. After weeks of searching, I found my sister living in a small town far from home. She was still working as a nurse. Her strength and resilience astounded me. I approached her with trepidation, fearing her reaction. At first, she refused to see me, but I never gave up. I kept visiting her place of work and waiting on her until finally, one evening she agreed to hear me out. As I confessed my sins, her eyes filled with tears, but she remained silent, listening. To my surprise, my sister embraced me after my confession. She spoke of forgiveness and the power of healing. She told me she had moved on and was now married to an amazing man with kids of her own. She said she had always wanted children with her first husband Femi, but for some reason, she never took in. As we spoke, she said that she had suspected my feelings for her husband, but had hoped I would overcome them. She told me her ex-husband came to her two years after he sent her packing to apologize for the way he treated her and all that happened. He also said that he wanted them to get back together and be a family again. My sister said she eventually forgave him, but rejected the idea of getting back together and trying to make things work between them. After trying for a while to win my sister's affection to no avail, Femi finally gave up the idea and went on with his life. My sister's forgiveness was not immediate, but it was a start and we began to rebuild our relationship one step at a time. One day, while I accompany Damara to a community health fair, I meet Kalechi, a kind and compassionate doctor who had recently moved to our town. Kalechi is in his early 30s, tall, with a warm smile that reached his eyes. He exudes a calming presence, making everyone around him feel at ease. His dedication to his patients and his gentle demeanor immediately catch my attention. Our initial interaction was brief, but impactful. I volunteered to help at the fair and Kalechi and I found ourselves working side by side, distributing health information and attending to the community's needs. 
As we worked together, I was impressed by Kalechi's eagerness to help and his genuine concern for others. Over the next few months, I and Kalechi's paths crossed frequently. We shared many conversations, each one revealing more about our pasts and our hopes for the future. Kalechi shared his story of moving to the town to make a difference and how he valued integrity and kindness above all. I opened up about my mistakes and the path I was on to make amends. Our honesty and openness create a strong bond of trust between us. Kalechi's admiration for me continued to grow as he witnessed my dedication to repairing my relationship with Amara and my commitment to becoming a better person. I, in turn, found solace in Kalechi's steady support and understanding. He encouraged me to forgive myself and to embrace the possibility of a brighter future. As our friendship deepened, I started to notice the small acts of kindness Kalechi showed me such as bringing my favorite snacks when we were together, remembering little details about my life, and offering a listening ear whenever I needed to talk. These gestures, though simple, meant the world to me and began to stir feelings I hadn't allowed myself to experience before. One evening, after a particularly fulfilling day at the clinic, Kalechi invites me to a quiet dinner at a local restaurant. The atmosphere was cozy, with soft music playing in the background and candlelight casting a warm glow. Over dinner, we share stories, laugh, and enjoy each other's company. The conversation turns personal, and Kalechi admits his feelings for me, expressing his admiration for my cheerful nature and strength. I was taken aback, but deeply moved. I felt a rush of emotions, gratitude, affection, and a budding love I hadn't thought possible for myself. I confessed my feelings for Kalechi, acknowledging the fear I had of opening my heart again, but also the hope that he has brought into my life. Our relationship blossomed. We enjoyed simple pleasures together, walks in the park, shared meals, and quiet evenings talking about our dreams. As time passed, Kalechi proposed to me in a heartfelt moment under the stars, promising to stand by my side through all of life's challenges. Overwhelmed with joy, I accept. Our wedding was a beautiful, intimate ceremony, attended by close friends and family, including Amara, my sister, who stood proudly by my side.